position. Pierce comes charging in. Oh my! Four on the clock. Three on the clock. Pierce for the game. Got it. Pierce. Basket. <laughs> and he's gonna get to the free throw line. If you're a relatively new NBA fan, you might know Paul Pierce simply as the former player turned analyst trolling your team. As a team, I don't, I don't, I don't know where Milwaukee goes from here. Because what are you? I, whoa, 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 whoa! No, so listen. is this over? No, listen, I think it's over. This series is over. Yeah, they One lost game. You just sat there and said that they could win an NBA championship. Yeah, I did say that. Getting clowned by his colleagues. He's won one scoring title. You weren't able to win a scoring title. That's too bad. He has three rings. You have one ring. Ooh, three is bigger than one. Uh, from this recent unintentional live stream? He from Istanbul. Turkey. From Turkey's. We've been to Turkey's before. Or maybe even as the veteran on his last legs bouncing around the league. But for students of the game, or those of you who've been around long enough to have witnessed Pierce's Hall of Fame career, you know the truth. Pierce, final seconds. Pierce puts it up for the win. Knocks it down. Celtics win. This is the story behind Paul Pierce. Born in Oakland to Lorraine Hosey and George Pierce, Paul didn't see much of his father growing up and was largely raised by Lorraine and two older, athletically gifted half-brothers. When Pierce was eight, he and his mom moved to Inglewood to be near Lorraine's ailing mother in Los Angeles. It was in LA, in the shadow of the Great Western Forum, that Pierce the Baller was molded. Pierce became active in the Police Activities League, which gave children from low-income families the chance to play organized sports. While playing in the PAL, Pierce made an impression on Detective Scott Collins, who coached in the league and was known to help get his young athletes into Lakers games when he worked security at the Forum. Coach Collins been the father figure not only to me, but a lot of kids growing up. Though according to a 2008 Sports Illustrated profile, a 13-year-old Pierce wanted to be a garbage man, the admittedly chubby youngster idolized the Showtime Lakers. But Pierce, who originally played baseball, couldn't crack Inglewood High's varsity basketball team as a freshman or sophomore. As legend has it, Pierce hit the gym harder between his sophomore and junior campaigns and returned to Inglewood High not just as a varsity player in his junior season, but as one of the team's and the state of California's star players. Pierce then averaged 27 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists as a senior earning California Mr. Basketball honors and a spot in the star-studded 1995 McDonald's All-American game. The meteoric rise continued at Kansas, where as a freshman, Pierce shared Big 8 Co-Freshman of the Year honors with Colorado's Chauncey Billups, and as both a sophomore and junior, was named Big 12 Tournament MVP two years in a row. Pierce averaged 20 points on better than 51% shooting as a junior, and led Kansas to a combined 69-6 and record over his second and third collegiate seasons. But Roy Williams' squad couldn't get over the hump, as the Jayhawks fell in the Elite Eight, Sweet 16, and second round of the NCAA tournament in Pierce's three seasons there. Nevertheless, Pierce left college an obvious NBA talent, with some expecting him to hear his name called in the top three of the 98 draft. Instead, one slot behind Dirk Nowitzki, and five selections behind Vince Carter, Pierce went number 10 to Boston, a team the young Lakers fan grew up despising. And a lot of people said the Boston Celtics wanted to move up in the draft. They never thought a Paul Pierce would be available at 10. They're ecstatic in Boston. What were your thoughts as you dropped from two to 10? Well, it was a little disappointment, but uh, you know, that's the way things go. And you know, I just got to move on and use motivation. Pierce joined an Antoine Walker-led Celtics team with immediate playoff expectations. Though Pierce averaged more than 16 points, shot better than 41% from deep, and made an all-rookie team, Rick Pitino's Celtics finished a disappointing 19-31 in the lockout-shortened campaign. The Celtics again fell flat on their faces during the 99-2000 season, which culminated in this famous Pitino rant. Larry Bird's not walking through that door, fans. Kevin McHale's not walking through that door, and Robert Parrish is not walking through that door. Unbeknownst to Pitino and the rest of Boston, however, 
the next Celtics legend had already walked through the door, and he was just about ready to make a name for himself. Before Pierce's breakout 2000-2001 campaign could tip off, however, the 22-year-old faced a brush with death. On a September night in 2000, just a week before training camp was set to open, Pierce was attacked by a group of men at a club in Boston's theater district. While what instigated the attack remains a mystery, Pierce was stabbed 11 times in the face, neck, and back, had a bottle smashed over his head, and was kicked while defenseless on the ground. It just happened so fast, and I, and I looked up and my, my clothes were ripped. I had blood uh, coming down my face. That's the first thing I remember, blood coming down my face, and I'm like wiping it. And I'm like, I'm seriously hurt. The most serious of the stab wounds damaged Pierce's lung, which required emergency surgery. Celtics teammate Tony Batie and his brother, who were in the washroom during the attack, frantically drove Pierce to New England Medical Center. How close did you come to dying? It was a miracle because the deadly strike right here, it pierced my diaphragm, pierced my lung. It just pinched the two and stopped short in my heart. Pierce's hospital stay and rehabilitation was cut short by the fact doctors used laparoscopic surgery to repair his collapsed lung rather than cutting his chest open. Remarkably, Pierce not only made it back in time to start the season, he played in all 82 games that year. A few years later, Pierce donated $2.5 million to the high-tech surgical center that saved his life. Back on the court, the Celtics once again missed the playoffs, but Pierce exploded in his third season, averaging more than 25 points and 6 rebounds. No performance during that 2000-2001 season left as indelible a mark on Pierce's career as a homecoming game against the defending champion Lakers. Pierce dropped 42 points on 13 of 19 shooting in a close loss, prompting Lakers superstar Shaquille O'Neal to heap praise on the young Celtic in the postgame locker room. Shaq called over Boston Herald reporter Steve Bolpin, and the rest was history. Write this down. Paul Pierce is the mother <laughs> truth. He told him that I was the bleep, bleep, bleep truth. I knew the kid can play, but I didn't know he can play like that. Don't take anything out of it. Paul Pierce is the truth. Pierce now had one of the coolest nicknames in the game and had established himself as one of the NBA's young stars. But entering year four as a pro, he'd yet to win more than 36 games in a season. That all changed in 2001-2002, when Pearson Walker carried an underwhelming Celtics team to 49 wins and the Eastern Conference Finals, Boston's best performance in 14 years. Pierce, an all-star and all-NBA third team selection that season, penned his first true playoff masterpiece in game three of the 2002 East Finals scoring 19 fourth quarter points to spark what was the greatest fourth quarter comeback in postseason history, after the Celtics had dug a 26 point hole earlier in the contest. Celtics lead. One of the most amazing comebacks in NBA history. For the longest time, that served as the peak of Pierce's career. As though the Celtics remained a playoff team and the truth continued to knock down big shots, Boston was far from a true contender. In the five years following that 2002 Conference Finals appearance, though Pierce averaged roughly 24 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 steals, the Celtics won just one playoff series. By the time the 2006-2007 season wrapped up, an injury-riddled campaign for Pierce that saw Boston go 24-58, and Pierce was a perennial all-star who had won three playoff series in nine years and had never even been part of a 50-win team. Of course, everything changed that summer. The Celtics traded for Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett during the 2007 offseason, returning the franchise to its glorious tradition of competing for championships with some of the game's biggest stars wearing green and white. Assembling the Big Three meant each of Pierce, Garnett, and Allen would have to sacrifice for the greater good. While the potential was obvious on paper, no one knew how the experiment would fare on the court. Though Pierce's raw production predictably dipped, he turned in what at the time was his best shooting season, remaining Boston's leading scorer and an absolute force in the clutch while becoming a more complete two-way player. 
between Pierce's refined game, Garnett anchoring one of the most formidable defenses we've seen, Allen's shooting, and the contributions of players like a young Rajon Rondo, Kendrick Perkins, James Posey, and Leon Poe, among others, the Celtics romped to 66 wins, the third best mark in franchise history. Though they were pushed to seven games twice and played only two games less than the maximum required of a championship team, the 2007-2008 Celtics did eventually triumph, with the Big Three's first season together resulting in Boston's first championship in 22 years, 17th championship overall, and the last title the franchise has won. Pierce's postseason was the stuff of legend, as while he only averaged about 19 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and a steal on pretty middling efficiency, he also went toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, on both ends of the court, en route to the championship. Pierce poured in 41 points in a Game 7 epic to eliminate LeBron's Cavs in the East Semis, then averaged roughly 22 points and 6 assists on 59% true shooting to outduel Kobe's Lakers in the finals earning Finals MVP honors in the process. That Finals is also marked by one infamous Pierce moment, as the Celtics captain was carried off the court and wheelchaired to the locker room after suffering what appeared to be a serious injury during the third quarter of Game 1, only to return moments later. Well, uh, this is the sight that the Celtics fans want to see, and here the ovation as he comes hopping out of the tunnel. Pierce clearly just wanted his Willis Reed moment. Or maybe there's another explanation? I have a confession to make. <laughs> Whoa. I just had to go to the bathroom. A number a one or a number two? I had to go two. to the bathroom. But why did you need a wheelchair to get to the bathroom? It was that I, bad. It was something went down. I had to go <laughs> to the bathroom. Oh, Beetle. you were streaking? Okay, hey. All right, back to basketball. The Celtics' quest for a repeat was derailed by a Garnett knee injury in 2009. But Pierce's work in KG's absence that season landed him his highest ever MVP voting finish. Though Boston never quite hit their regular season stride in 2009-2010, Pierce and the Celtics were still the Eastern Conference's looming bully, and the veteran team still had a few tricks up their sleeves when the playoffs rolled around. Pierce, final seconds. Pierce puts it up for the win! Knocks it down! Celtics win! After Pierce's dagger helped eliminate Miami, the fourth-seeded Celtics took down the top-seeded Cavs in the second round, sending LeBron packing, both literally and figuratively, before beating the heavily favored Dwight Howard-led Magic in the East Finals, setting up another final showdown with the Lakers. Hobbled by the loss of Kendrick Perkins, the Celtics faltered up 3-2 and let the Lakers off the ropes, getting blown out in Game 6 before blowing a 13-point second-half lead in a 4-point Game 7 loss. It was the closest Pierce would ever get to a second championship. He made a couple more All-Star teams, the Celtics remained a playoff mainstay in his final three years with the team, and Boston even pushed the Big 3 Heat to seven games in the 2012 East Finals. But by the end of the 2012-13 season, Pierce was 35, had one year left on his pricey contract, and the Celtics were coming off of a 41-40 campaign that saw them lose to New York in the first round. The writing was on the wall, as Boston kickstarted a rebuild by trading Pierce, Garnett, Jason Terry, and more to Brooklyn for a package of players and picks that left the Nets with little more than an arena and a bag of basketballs when Pierce and KG eventually departed the borough. Pearson Garnett joined a Jason Kidd coach Nets team featuring Darren Williams and Joe Johnson, but they were more hype than substance, and after a second round loss to the star-studded Heat again, Pierce was off to Washington for a year before finishing his career at home with two seasons as a Clipper. Pierce may not have been the player he once was by the time he got to Brooklyn, Washington, or LA, but he still had something left in the tank for the game's biggest moments. Just ask the Raptors. To shoot. Pierce wants it, takes it, makes it! Another one for Pierce! That's why they got me here! That's why I'm in here! The Raptors again. Here is Lowry on the deck, through two. Lowry put it up, it's blocked by Pierce! And the Nets win the series! Wait, is this against Toronto again? Kicks out to Pierce, gets off the three. What did you expect from the truth? And the Hawks. Pierce with two. Pierce fall away at the horn. It's gone. Paul Pierce does it again. Did you call bank? I called game. 
there were no such moments as a Clipper, where Pierce's career finally fizzled out, but he did bring Celtics fans to their feet one more time in his farewell season. Though, to a lot of fans, the most memorable moment of Pierce's final NBA campaign was getting trolled by Draymond Green. Chasing that farewell tour, they don't love you like that. By 17, by 46. We may not have loved him like that, or loved Paul Pierce enough to give him a Kobe-esque farewell tour, but don't let that get in the way of the facts. Pierce is 16th on the all-time scoring list and scored more points for the league's most historic franchise than anyone other than John Havlicek, which is a big reason why his number 34 is hanging in the rafters. He made 10 All-Star teams and 4 All-NBA teams. He won a championship and a Finals MVP award. He won 16 playoff series and ranks 21st all-time in postseason scoring. He's one of the greatest hoopers the basketball-mad city of Los Angeles has ever produced. And as countless fans around the association who came to loathe him are well aware, he hit a countless number of big shots, putting daggers in helpless teams from coast to coast and talking a lot of trash while doing it. In clutch situations. Why is there <laughs> It was money in the bank. Hate on him all you want. You know it's the truth. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.